feel now. This study also has several limitations. So one major limitation is the exclusion of studies that included individuals with comorbid autism. Given the high rate of co-occurrence between autism and ADHD, this exclusion limits the generalizability of the study of the findings to a significant portion of autistic population. It's like saying, we study the effects of rain on people, but only those who weren't already carrying umbrellas. You get the picture? It doesn't tell us the whole story. Another limitation is the reliance on self-reported data for substance use during pregnancy. So mothers may underreport their consumption due to social stigma or recall bias. And this could lead to an underestimation of the true effect. Furthermore, most of the studies adjusted for socioeconomic factors, but none adjusted for their partner substance use during pregnancy. There is actually evidence that um, um, show that mating, a sort of or a sortative mating is what they call it, affects parental smoking and alcohol consumption, and failure to take into account the partner substance use can lead to biased effect estimates. Now, finally, while the meta-analysis of smoking and ADHD using genetically sensitive designs is compelling, the evidence for alcohol and caffeine is less conclusive. So more research is therefore needed, and especially studies that account for genetic and environmental confounding factors should be included, or should be done. So what is the overall takeaway? While the study doesn't completely exonerate prenatal exposure to caffeine, smoking, and alcohol, it suggests that the link to ADHD conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder may be weaker than previously thought, especially when accounting for genetic factors. However, the limitations, particularly the exclusion of individuals with comorbid autism, highlight the need for further research. So as someone who navigates the world as an autistic person, I know firsthand the importance of understanding the complex interplay of factors that contribute to our neurodevelopment. So this study is a step in the right direction, but there is so much more that we need to learn.